Good afternoon, friends. Welcome to my channel, Pediatric Classes. Today we are going to discuss about an important topic that is febrile seizures. Uh, this session will be useful uh, not only for medical undergraduates but also for postgraduates and the NEET aspirants and also practicing pediatricians. So, with this introduction, let me start sharing my screen. Hope you all have subscribed to my channel. If you have not yet subscribed, kindly do support uh, this initiative by subscribing to the channel. So, uh, febrile seizures, as you all know, are the seizures occurring in a neurologically healthy child between the ages of 6 and 16 months. That means, why are it was 6 and 16 months? So, so, they say 6 months to 5 years. So, people get confused by 5 years means, is it including 5? Is it so, just remember 6 and 16 months, it is associated with a temperature of 38 degrees Celsius or higher without any central nervous system infection or metabolic imbalance and that occur without any history of prior afebrile seizure. So, this definition of febrile seizure is very important. So, the incidence is around 2 to 5 percent of children uh, experience at least an episode of simple febrile seizure. Age group we already discussed 6 months to 16 months or 6 months to 5 years. Peak occurrence is 18 to 24 months. Majority are simple febrile seizure. What exactly is simple febrile seizure? We will discuss subsequently. Coming to the genetics of this, there are reference books for this session will be OPGI and also Nelson textbook of pediatrics. Genetics also have included it. This is for the NEET aspirants because many questions can be asked from this area. Around 25 to 40 percent have a positive family history. They are found to have an autosomal dominant trait in certain families. But most of the cases are polygenic. Uh, genes FEB 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, uh, 8, 9, 10 all are associated with it. But the channel uh, which is associated with the febrile seizure is sodium channel gene SCNIA associated with FEB2. And a risk of febrile seizure after one affected child is 10 percentage. And the risk raises to 50 percentage if the parent has febrile seizure. It is also associated with certain uh, illness. So any disease where there is a high spiky fever, the patient can develop a febrile seizure. So, it is associated with diseases like otitis media, bronchopneumonia, post-DPT immunization, gastroenteritis, upper respiratory infections, measles, etc. So, what are the differential diagnoses? So, there is fever, there is seizure. So, it can be because of intracranial infections like meningitis, encephalitis, brain abscess, etc or can be any fever trigger seizure in a children with underlying epilepsy. So, now coming to the types of febrile seizures, we have two types of febrile seizures. What is a simple febrile seizure? Another thing is a complex febrile seizure. So, simple febrile seizure and complex febrile seizures are differentiated by this table. So, simple febrile seizure means a child in the age group of 5 to 16 months, 6 to 16 months presents to you with primary generalized seizures, usually tonic-clonic, okay. And they are lasting less than 15 minutes and they occur only once within a 24 hour period. There leaves no neurological sequelae. Whereas in a complex febrile seizure what happens is it may be generally focal seizure. It may be prolonged that is more than 15 minutes. It may recur within 24 hours again and again the neurological sequelae may be there. So most of the cases of febrile seizure are simple febrile seizures which are generalized tonic clonic seizures occurring less than 15 minutes but does not recur within uh, 24 hours and also does not leave any neurological sequelae. So what is this terminology febrile status epilepticus? This is a febrile seizure lasting more than 30 minutes. 11 percent tend to have unilateral hippocampal swelling in the cases of febrile seizure epilepticus. So, there is another terminology called simple febrile seizure plus. That is a term used for those recurrent febrile seizures within the 24 hours. So, such a condition only that is that we can actually say it a simple febrile seizure plus. So, how is the recurring tendency? So, please note here the febrile seizure recur in 30 percent experiencing the first episode in 50 percent after two or more episodes and also in 50 percent of infants less younger than one a year in a, at the onset of febrile seizures. So, these are the percentages uh, need aspirants please note the percentages. So, what are the risk factors for the recurrence of febrile seizures? So, we have major risk factors and also minor risk factors. 
Uh, this tabular column is usually given in uh, Nelson textbook. So these are the major risk factors that is age less than one year, the duration of fever less than 24 hours, the fever 38 to 39 degrees Celsius and also the minor risk factors like family history of febrile seizures, family history of epilepsy, complex febrile seizures, daycare, male gender, low sodium at the time of presentation. So they say if there are no risk factors, the risk rates at least 12 percentage. If there is one risk factor, it is 25 to 50 percentage, two risk factors, it is 50 to 59 percentage, and three or more risk factors, the risk raises to 73 to 100 percentage. So again, this percentage of risk factors are very important. Previous, uh, some neat entrance questions, what has happened? They are asked, uh, one of the risk factors, what is the risk rate? So it is around 25 to 50 percentage, if one risk factor is present. Although 15% of children with epilepsy have had febrile seizures, 2 to 7% of children who experience febrile seizures proceed to develop epilepsy later in life. Okay, so uh, that is if we take 100 children with epilepsy, only 15% of the children uh, with epilepsy will have, uh, or 15 children may have an epilepsy with febrile seizures. Then. But 2 to 7% children who experience febrile seizures, they proceed to develop epilepsy later in life. So what are the predictors of epilepsy after a febrile seizure? These are the predictors of epilepsy. That is simple febrile seizure. The risk of subsequent epilepsy is only 1%. If it is a recurrent febrile seizure, it is 4%. If it is a complex febrile seizure, 6%. Fever less than 1 hour before febrile seizure, 11%. If there is a family history of epilepsy, we have the risk rises to 18%. And if it is a complex febrile seizure, or it's a focal type, it is 29%. And neurodevelopment abnormalities are associated, it is 33%. So, a word about the epilepsy syndromes. So, mostly for the PG students, this is GEFS plus, that is generalized epilepsy with febrile seizure plus. Another thing is severe myoclonic epilepsy of infancy or Dravet syndrome. Then other thing is temporal lobe epilepsy secondary to mesial temporal sclerosis. That is prolonged febrile seizure. This can cause a hippocampal injury. And also mesial temporal sclerosis leading on to temporal lobe epilepsy. So this is one another question. Which type, which lobe and all. You remember it is hippocampal injury. So leading on to temporal lobe epilepsy. So what is this GEFS plus? So it is an autosomal dominant type. Onset in early childhood. Remission will be in mid childhood. Clinical features of multiple febrile seizures and several subsequent types of afebrile, uh, of afebrile generalized seizures, including GTCS, absence, myoclonic, atonic seizures, etc. I'm sorry for the spelling mistakes. Uh, then what about this Dravet syndrome? Dravet syndrome is very severe of all the lot. Uh, onset is in infancy with febrile and afebrile unilateral clonic recurring every one to two months. So, here, please note it is unilateral, it is clonic moments. Okay. It is triggered by fever, but they are more prolonged, frequent, clocal, and comes in clusters. Later in second year, what happens is tends to be more like a myoclonic or atypical absence and partial seizures associated with developmental delay. So let me now take you to the evaluation of it. Evaluation as in any other febrile seizure history, ask for the history, examination, manage acute febrile seizures and acute illness. And determine the risk factors for recurrence of febrile seizures. We need to counsel the parents regarding the recurrence risk, the first aid, and the management. Then you also have to determine the risk for epilepsy. So if it's a low risk, there's no therapy or interventions are required. If it is intermediate or high risk, we need to do EEG and also we need to start the patient on intermittent or continuous uh, prophylaxis with diazepam. Continuous are very rarely used. Most of the things used are intermittent actually. So here, yeah, this, what we have discussed now, we need to uh, take a proper history, rule out L meningitis or encephalitis. Do you think an LP is required in all cases of febrile seizures? No, not routinely performed in the evaluation of a neurologically healthy child with a simple febrile seizures. But these are the definite indications. If the infant is less than six months who present with a seizure and a fever or in an ill appearing child, please go ahead and do uh, the LP. Infant between 6 to 12 months, what is the criteria? If the patient does not receive H influenza or streptococcus pneumonia immunization or if the immunization status is unknown, you have to do the LP and rule out any meningitis. 
and if there is any clinical uh, any age we can do lp if there is clinical signs and symptoms of concern like for example if you are clinically suspected meningitis or encephalitis if you clinically suspected yes you go ahead and do an lp and also if case of partially treated one that is they had received antibodies because antibody treatment can mask the signs and symptoms of meningitis so that is also an indication for lp what about eeg eeg please note here they do not predict the recurrence of future epilepsy so whatever you are doing it's better you do within two weeks of febrile seizures what happens is uh, they will have a non specific slowing so if the eeg is indicated delay for two weeks and then do but that is difficult indications are to those cases if epilepsy is strongly suspected to delineate the type of epilepsy rather than to predict the occurrence febrile status epilepticus cases as i discussed earlier what is febrile status epilepticus that is cases of febrile seizures who have a seizures beyond 30 minutes okay so such a cases what happens if you do the eeg we will see a focal slowing within 72 hours so status is suggest actually acute hippocampal injury blood studies are not routinely indicated in simple febrile seizure but serum electrolytes serum calcium magnesium phosphorus cbc blood sugar actually we can do in children with prolonged postictal obstetrics or with poor oral intake other things are actually not routinely uh, recommended uh, but neuroimaging ct mri not routinely recommended in case of simple febrile seizure but they are used in case of complex febrile seizure and also in neurologically abnormal child so what is the criteria for admission simple febrile seizures first episode the age is more than 18 months and a clinically stable child with no symptoms or signs of meningitis that does not require a diagnostic investigation so admission is not required what is required is a parental education i already mentioned we need to educate the parents regarding the recurrence risk regarding the first aid what you are planning to give etc if the age is less than 18 months the admission should be envisaged for the possible performance of a lumbar puncture if it's already diagnosed case of simple febrile seizures only parental education is required but please note here if it is a case of complex febrile seizures it is better you admit the child for observation because there is a wide variability there is a there is wide variability in the conditions underlying this events so what's the treatment first treatment acute management as in any seizure please note here it is airway breathing and circulation first we need to take care uh, please make sure that the child comes uh, uh, we need to the first abc is taken care of then what is a drug this like benzodiazepine is the drug of choice if the febrile seizure lasts more than 5 minutes we can either give midazolam lorazepam or diazepam this is the important like we have all we have to educate the parents about the risk of recurrence of febrile seizures risk of uh, recurrence of epilepsy acute management seizure emotional support etc why because if such a thing if the seizure is happening at home even the patient parents can give the first aid so the drugs used are either a rectal diazepam or buccal or intranasal midazolam iv benzodiazepine phenobarbital phenytoin or valproate are used for febrile seizure epilepticus so if the seizure is lasting for more than 5 minutes go for midazolam lorazepam or diazepam okay so lorazepam if you give it is 0.1 mg per kg slow iv you should give okay rapid iv push may push the child into respiratory depression so it is not advised so about what about the drug prophylaxis against recurrences for children with one or more simple febrile seizures continuous or intermittent prophylaxis are not recommended what is required is a detailed parental education counseling the about the recurrence risk about how to do give the first aid at home how to give the drugs like for example if you are giving a midazolam nasal spray how they can give it all you can teach them what about the intermittent prophylaxis these are recommended in patients with at least one of the following conditions that is a frequent recurrence patient that is three or more in six months and or we, or we can say that four or more in a year that means the child is having three or more seizures in that six months period or if we take the whole year if the child is having four in that year four or more consider giving intermittent prophylaxis and those with have risk factors or recurrence can also be started on intermittent prophylaxis the dosage the preferred drug of intermittent prophylaxis is 0.8 to 1 mg per kg per day in two divided doses of clobazam diazepam can be given oral or rectal oral is 0.33 mg per kg per dose every 8 hours or 0.5 mg per kg every 8 hours 
but most of the I think preferred is an oral dosage. But febrile seizures occur in 98% of cases within the first 24 hours from the onset of fever, and the hence the duration of prophylaxis is for first three days. Other drugs which can be used for intermittent prophylaxis which I have uh, uh, taken from Nelson that is again they have written about clonazepam, nitrazepam, etc. But please note most of the drugs which we use for intermittent prophylaxis is clobazepam. Previously it was diazepam must must, but nowadays most of us are using clonazepam. Uh, cl clobazepam. Hmm? So clobazepam is a really important thing that is around 0 0.8 to 1 mg per kg per day in two divided doses. What about continuous prophylaxis? What are the indications? So, if the febrile seizure recurrence is more than 6 per year in spite of regular intermittent prophylaxis or if the patient is having a febrile status epilepticus, consider the use of continuous prophylaxis with phenobarbitone in a child less than 1 year in the dosage of 4 to 5 mg per kg per day in 1 to 2 divided doses or if the child is more than 1 year, consider the dosage of sodium valproate in the dose of 20 to 30 mg per kg per day in 2 to 3 divided doses. The duration of uh, prophylaxis is around 1 to 2 years. So what about the role of antipyretics? Parapyretics, as you know, what we we'll use paracetamol in the dose of 15 mg per kg per dose. They do not prevent recurrence, but only provide comfort to the child. The other medicines which can be used are ibuprofen, 5 to 10 mg per kg per dose, or mefenamic acid, 3 to 5 mg per kg per dose, if no contraindications are there. Now, it is mefenamic acid used uh, coming down because of the, as you know, the risk of interstitial, uh, the nephritis and all of these things are there. So, the preferred drugs are actually paracetamol and if required, ibuprofen. Iron deficiency appears to be associated with increased uh, risk of febrile seizures. So, in such patients, please do a hemoglobin and if there is iron deficiency, treat it if deficiency is present so that it will help in reducing the risk. Okay. And outcome after initial febrile seizures, 3 to 12 percent develop epilepsy by adolescents. And the risk of epilepsy is 1.5 to 2.4 percentage for simple febrile seizures. And this increases in children with complex febrile seizures or pre-existing neurodevelopmental abnormality or there is a family history of epilepsy. So in this session, I actually have discussed about recurrence for febrile seizure. There are so many risk factors that is major and the minor one. The recurrence for epilepsy or the, there is a chance of development of epilepsy that actually these are the risk factors as a complex febrile seizure or a pre-existing neurodevelopmental abnormality or there is a family history of epilepsy. So to conclude, these are febrile seizures are frequent and benign disorders that are infancy and childhood. What is maximum required is most importantly what is required is the parental education, a reassurance, and prophylactic anti-epileptic drugs when required. This constitute the main modality. So I uh, hope the session is clear to you. And if you like the session, please don't forget to like it and comment it and share with your friends. Thank you so much and stay safe.